James Mansfield here, and you're watching Drag Herstory, the show where we salute the girls who laid the foundation by applying one. Today, we're gonna talk about straight people. The most misunderstood creature in this drag world, the straight man in particular. Harking back to the topic of camp, the artistry of camp has been a celebrated tradition amongst comedy for decades, dating all the way back to the burlesque halls and even so far back as the days of Shakespeare. Now, it's pretty common today for a straight bloke to throw on a dress and have a few laughs, but back in the day, it was pretty daring and raised quite a few eyebrows. Now today, we crack open our textbooks to the very first diva, Julian Eltinge. Julian Eltinge was a burlesque performer dating back to the 1920s, and perhaps the very first fishy queen. While most female impersonators of his times were sloppy joes that threw on a dress for a few cheap laughs, Julian Eltinge took his artistry seriously. Julian really went there with his costuming, his dancing, and his theatrics. He was totally dedicated to looking like a high society gal of the times. I understand Julian was a very small man, made a beautiful woman, and there's the story oh, that the, uh, a young boy saw Julian in vaudeville and ran home and said to his mother, I don't want to be an explorer. I want to be a female impersonator. And as far as it's been documented, Julian Eltinge was 100% straight. In fact, he was known for getting into fistfights with anyone that dared challenge his masculinity. Oh, I've seen pictures of you, Mr. Eltinge, and you were dressed just like a lady. Yes, but don't forget, I always had a cigar in my mouth. <laughs> he went on to star in silent films, open up his own theater, as well as maintain a successful burlesque career up until the early 1930s when the popularity of burlesque started to decline. Julian was a fierce performer and definitely laid out some glittery bricks and the road us drag queens follow today. We move on to Milton Burl. Like I said before, the popularity of burlesque had fallen out of favor in live theater halls. However, it took one performer to reshape the brand and really bring it to a mass audience through a new medium, and that medium was television. Give me that, give me that, let me tell you. <laughs> Uncle Milty was America's first television star. He was one of the top comedians from the 1950s onward to the 1960s. See the clothes upon the line. Take those clothes pins on the line. Hello. Known for his rapid fire wit and hilarious comebacks. I think you're beautiful. In fact, I'd say that you're a, a 36. 24, 32. That's right. That's only her mouth. <laughs> Another aspect of his comedy was his affinity to dress up as the other gender. How do you do? <laughs> and that's my husband. How do you do? <laughs> when he was dressed up, he would be a glamorous bon viand, a risque bit that many people called him out for. I love being a girl. How about you, Jane? Oh, I love being a girl, too. <laughs> How about you, Milton? <laughs> Uncle Milty raised quite a few eyebrows and even had a resurgence in his career in the early 1980s when he appeared in the music video for Round and Round by the metal band Rat. Now we move on to many folks' introduction to drag, Bugs Bunny. Mm, let us play games. <laughs> okay, Don Juan. <laughs> The creation of artist Tex Avery. Bugs Bunny, in a nutshell, was a cartoon dating all the way back to the 1930s. Warner Brothers produced these animated shorts to be shown before films. They were bawdy, cheap, and held the attention of everyday consumers that went to the theater to spend the day there. Because back in the day, when you went to the theater, you really went to the theater. Bugs Bunny's humor was based off of the bawdy comedians of burlesque halls. Blackout gags, pants tugging, and most importantly, drag. Oh, like they say, never send a duck to do a rabbit's job. Okay, come on out. I got you covered. Hi. Wow. 
Uh, him. Surely you're not going to be taken in by that old gag. Isn't she lovely? <laughs> Out of sheer honesty, I demand that you tell him who you are. Well, haven't you anything to say? Anything? Out of sheer honesty? <laughs> yes, I would just love a duck dinner. And Bugs is still at it today. We team you up with a hot female co-star. Usually, I play the female love interest. About the cross-dressing thing in the past, funny, today, disturbing. Fuck you. We move on to Flip Wilson. Flip Wilson was a popular comedian in the mid-1970s. He was a very successful comedian that Time Magazine deemed the very first African-American TV star. Flip Wilson was a huge success and was wildly popular on the TV variety circuit. He would later go on to receive his very own TV show, The Flip Wilson Show, where his most popular character came to life, Geraldine Jones. Well, you gotta see it to believe it. <laughs> well, you better believe it, cause you ain't gonna get to see it. <laughs> a sassy and shamelessly flirty gal, Geraldine was a huge hit in Book Wilson's act. Oh, oh, catch me, Jim. <laughs> oh, my. Jim, I think I'm gonna faint. Well, mm. maybe you should get some air. Maybe I shouldn't, too. <laughs> maybe I should go over here on the couch and lay down. Mm. Don't hold that bucket too close. I think it's the fumes from the chicken delicious. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, my goodness. I am exasperated, Jim. <laughs> what am I going to do now? If I didn't already have a boyfriend, I'd make a suggestion. <laughs> she appeared on shows like Saturday Night Live, dozens of roasts. She even danced for Bob Hope on his 80th birthday. I happen to be president of the Ray Charles Fan Club. Uh -huh. And I'm here to present you with the annual Ray Charles Singing Award. Annual? Yes. Uh, that's funny. I, I, I've never heard of it before. Well, this is the first year, and you're the first to win it. Oh, I see. Uh, we don't just give it to anybody. <laughs> you understand that, don't uh, you, Ray? I it. Yes. So on behalf of the Ray Charles Fan Club, it gives me great pleasure to present you with your award. Uh, well, I want to thank you very much, Jody, but uh, just what is it? This. I, I still hope somebody else wins this next year. <laughs> she even won Flip Wilson his only Grammy for the album The Devil Made Me Buy This Dress. Geraldine coined many phrases that became popular, such as, The Devil Made Me Do It, What You See Is What You Get, and When You're Hot, You're Hot, and When You're Not, You're Not. Her high-pitched voice was inspired by Butterfly McQueen's character, Miss Prissy, in Gone With The Wind. She was Flip Wilson's way of appealing to a female audience without putting them down. My feet have had enough, honey. I can't take no more. The only reason I went on the tour was to get Red Fox's autograph. <laughs> well, did you get it? Did I get it? <laughs> I sure did. And honey, before I left, he wanted mine. <laughs> Geraldine was a self-confident and shoot-from-the-hip type of gal who was a laugh riot any time she made an appearance. As the years grew, Flip Wilson grew tired of portraying Geraldine and would respond to requests by simply saying, she's retired. We end our program with the creation of Aussie comedian Barry Humphreys, Dame Edna Everidge. Hello, possum! Let me look at you! <laughs> You've aged. <laughs> you have aged tragically. And yet I'm still the same. It isn't fair, is it, darling? This Melbourne housewife grew to major prominence in the 1980s. She started out as just a simple housewife and superstar, which evolved into megastar and finally a gigastar. Yeah. Uh, Dame Edna, Barry Humphreys got the CBE. Are you jealous of that when you do all the work? This man who is my manager, do you know what a manager is, kiddies? He, well, he takes some of my money for doing practically nothing. <laughs> and the Queen gave him a little title just to keep him happy. And do you know why she did? 
I told her to. Humphreys created the character as the epitome of upper class snobbery. I'm sorry, I can't pick you really because. <laughs> See this little blouse of yours? It would strobe on television. It would. <laughs> is an old Scandinavian word meaning ghastly. <laughs> Dame Edna had a talk show that featured the appearances of many major celebrities of the time, a thing Dame Edna exploited to the nth degree. Her way of explaining her interview style was, as if it's a meeting of two friends, where one of whom is clearly more interesting than the other. Beautiful Bacall look. I, I don't know whether I can do it. Little look you had. I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> Well, almost. Isn't yeah. that spooky? Her specialty was putting celebrities in the hot seat and making them as uncomfortable as possible. I want you to say a word. One of the vilest, foulest words you could possibly think of. Just say it. Blow dry. I hate that word. <laughs> Dame Edna is a particularly interesting character, as on every talk show appearance she's ever made, Humphreys insisted that they use female pronouns to address her and treat her as if she's really a real person. This dedication to his craft makes Edna's outrageous claims seem all the more believable. I saw this man walking towards me, very small, short, and suddenly our eyes met. We got talking a little bit. Of I won't go into all the details, but he asked me to come back to his studio. Picasso. Picasso. It was Picasso. <laughs> Picasso. Picasso. Pablo Picasso. The artist. Oh, it was an impetuous thing. I felt guilt and excitement all in one. And of course, his Spanish, I didn't know. The only words I knew were tapas and <laughs> ole. <laughs> In a romantic encounter, that's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> he did paint me. I brought this picture along. Oh. This is me by Picasso. <laughs> that? That? So it's very good. You can, I'm, it's great. He's caught me in an emotional is, moment. Sir. You see, these are my guys. I think personally, it's terrible, don't you, girls? <laughs> I've never really thought he was much good. I think very, very overrated. Well, that's our show, kittens. I hope you learned something. Remember, drag is for everyone, and anything can be drag as long as you believe in it. Until next time, kittens. I'm going to go support some of my favorite straight men who love drag. Craigslist, here I come. And shoes with pink shoelaces, a polka dot vest, and that old man he wanted. And shoes with pink